Good evening. Welcome to the evening services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, November the 1st. We will have several songs and a couple of prayers, and I will uh, deliver a message in a series of messages that I've been uh, delivering over the past few weeks that I hope will be helpful to you. And so, if you would please, from uh, the song books that we use at the Northfield Church, Songs of Faith and Praise, if you would turn your books to hymn number 18. Hymn number 18. Okay. Faithful love flowing down from a thorn-covered ground Makes me whole, saves my soul Washes whiter than snow Faithful love comes each fear Reaches down, dries each tear Holds my hand when I can stand on my own. Faithful love, faithful love from above came to earth to show the Father's love. And I'll never be the same For I've seen faithful love face to face And Jesus is his name Faithful love is a friend just when hope seems to end Welcome face, sweet embrace Tender touch, filled with grace Faithful love, endless power Living flame, spirit's fire Burning bright in the night, guiding my way. Faithful love from above came to earth to show the Father's love, and I'll never. Same. For I've seen faithful love face to face, and Jesus is his name. For I've seen faithful love face to face, and Jesus is his name. Turn to number 31, please. Number 31. It's still and now that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I am the Lord that strengthens me. I am the Lord that strengthens thee. I am the Lord that strengthens thee. Number 15. 
51. After this song, we'll have a prayer together. Number 51. Father of mercy, stay my day, my love to thee grows more and more. Thy gifts are strewn upon my way like sands upon the great seashore, like sands upon the great seashore. Father of mercy, God of love, Fools gentle gifts all creatures share. The rolling seasons as they move proclaim to all thy constant care. Proclaim to all thy constant care. Father of mercies, may our hearts ne'er overlook thy bounteous What our Father's hand imparts, still on in great full praise and prayer, still on in great full praise and prayer. Let's all pray together. Our God, Heavenly Father, we just come before your throne of mercy and throne of grace with humility, knowing that uh, you are uh, in all and over all. Uh, we just uh, beseech you, dear Heavenly Father, for your loving care to be upon us. As we are going through these uh, difficult times, dear Heavenly Father, we we just pray that we will find solace in the fact that you are still our God and that you still look over us and you still comfort us and you still care for us. We pray for those that uh, have uh, problems in their lives, howbeit if they are physical problems, uh, emotional problems, whatever they may be. Uh, we know, dear Heavenly Father, within our midst that there are those that uh, have difficulties. I, I just pray that you would be with uh, our friend Pat as she goes through those difficulties, both uh, physical and emotional. I pray that you would be with her and just bless her and help her to, to get better, restore her to uh, her uh, guess if we can call it her normal life, that uh, you would possibly do so. I know that uh, Elizabeth Estevez had uh, testing done and perhaps the results are in already. I pray that those results will be uh, good results and uh, that uh, her, her condition that uh, she has with the headaches that she's been enduring will be uh, somehow alleviated. I pray for uh, my neighbor who asked uh, uh, prayers for her father on uh, his uh, behalf as he's had a, uh, a heart issues. And I pray that uh, you would be with uh, Stanley G. at, at uh, this time. 
be with us, dear Heavenly Father, and be with us through this service. Uh, help us uh, to enjoy the singing of praises to your name. Help us to get involved in the prayers and help us to get something out of the short message this evening that will carry us uh, through the week and uh, help us to look forward to the next time we meet again, howbeit uh, in person or through the uh, virtual uh, way of uh, YouTube. Uh, bless us and be with us. I pray this in your son's most holy name. Amen. And if you would turn your books to number 52. <clears throat> 52. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. Psalm 139, 17. Father and friend, thy life, thy love, beaming through all thy works we see, thy glory gilds the hands above, and all the To pure for mortal sight, enwrapped in clouds and beds reign as the Lord of life and light. Thy children shall. Sustained by this delightful thought, since thou their God art everywhere, they cannot be. Let's get to our lesson this evening. If you've been following along the past, uh, uh, I guess this is the third week, you know that I, I started a series of lessons uh, based on a, a book by Mark and Deborah Laser entitled, Seven Desires of Every Heart. And uh, the premise of the book presupposed, and I think rightfully so, that there are seven basic desires of every heart um, that, uh, especially uh, Christian hearts. And so we want to take it from that particular view as believers in the Lord. Studies show that human beings, every person, has these seven basic needs to be a I guess what you might call a well-rounded, fully satisfied, mentally healthy individual. One of these needs, and the one that we will cover this morning, is the second one. And if by review, if you remember last week, we said number one, and not necessarily in any order, was the need to be heard and understood. This evening, we are going to talk about the need to be affirmed, the need for affirmation. Affirmation needs to be loved and accepted. It means people viewing us as having worth and having value. Now, one authority in this field puts it this way, 
and I have not committed this to memory, so if I look down and I read parts of it, please excuse me. It says, we are relational beings. We're relational beings through and through. The same thing keeps showing up as the single most uh, influential contributor to our overall happiness and our overall well-being. It's relationships, real, live relationships, authentic, genuine relationships, people with whom we feel loved and truly accepted for being what we are, for being ourselves, that we don't have to fake it. We don't have to fake being something that we're not, that they accept us for what we are. Now, this same writer goes on to say, but unfortunately, in our society, relationships like this are becoming more and more of a scarcity. Why? I would contend it's because we're too busy. Have you seen the long lines these last few days of people voting? Now, if you were in a long line 25 years ago like that, what would you be doing? Well, first of all, we'd be closer together. And you'd be talking to one another. But hardly anyone is talking to one another. Everybody has this little device in their hand. They're on social media. They're texting. Uh, they're on a Twitter account. They're on an Instagram account. And so they have all of these social friends. There's, there's not enough of the real ones around them. Now, that being said, too much emphasis in our culture on being independent is striving too hard sometimes for the wrong things, not taking time for one another. How can you sit across from someone at a dinner table, something uh, I haven't done out in a restaurant recently, and be looking down at your, your, your uh, palm device and, and communicating with someone else while you have a real live human being right across from you. Real, live relationships. And so we are relational just by nature. And contrary sometimes to popular opinion, we do emphasize do, capital letters do, capital letters underline do, need one another. Now, not in a needy way, not in an unhealthy way, or even a codependent way, but in a healthy, mutually beneficial, giving, nurturing, fulfilling, and re rewarding way, in an authentic, reciprocal way. We need each other. One of the forefathers to modern psychology, a man by the name of Alfred Adler, put it this way, and I think he hit the nail right on the head. Genuine human connection is as essential to our existence as air and water. Pretty strong thought, isn't it? Genuine human connection is as essential to our existence as air and water. And so we have uh, come to the third lesson in this series of lessons. The first one was an overall view of the seven desires of the heart. And we went back to uh, Psalm uh, 37, uh, verses 4 through 6. 
Last week, we talked about the need to be heard and understood. And this week, we are going to talk for just a few moments about affirmation. No one can give us the affirmation that we need like Christ can and like members of his church, fellow believers can. There's no greater affirmation in this life as far as our relationship with God than what goes back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, when God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. There we have it. We're like God. We're created in his image. Can there be anything greater than that? That we're like God? We're spirit as God is spirit. In John chapter 4, verse 24, Jesus said, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Why? Because the spirit is where we're like God. We are spiritual beings. And so our understanding is that God is eternal and the soul of each individual that is born becomes eternal from the time these people are born. Our self-worth is not based on how much money we have. Our self-worth is not based on the color or tint of our skin or of our racial makeup. It's not of where we live and how affluent we are. To a great extent, you know what? We like people to think highly of us, don't we? But our self-worth does not solely depend on what folks think about us. And so we should not let others destroy our self-worth. God has affirmed it. Nobody can unaffirm it. God affirmed it by saying, let us create man in our image. We are spiritual beings created in God's image. And so we have affirmation by recreation. If our, in our creation we were created in God's image, God enables us to be recreated. As the human nature would take us and lead us away from God, which destroys any feeling of affirmation with God that we might have, God has a plan by which we can be reaffirmed, which we can be recreated. Let's look at the Apostle Paul's words that he wrote to Titus in Titus chapter 3, verse 5. He saved us, not on the basis of deeds, which we have done in righteousness, but according to the mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. God, through Jesus, recreated us. Our sins tarnished our affirmation, but God supplies a way that we can be regenerated. And he realized uh, uh, a way that we can be born again and the great blessing of being affirmed even after our past sinful behavior. In Christ, we became new creatures. That's what the Apostle Paul writes to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. So we have affirmation by our re-creation. 
Secondly, we have affirmation through and within the body of Christ. One of the reasons, I think, why individuals do not feel affirmed is because many times those around us attack us verbally, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Have you been listening to the campaigns? Do you know that they have found out and they've known for 150 or more years that negative campaigning works better than positive campaigning does? If you can say enough negative about the other person, if you can dig up enough dirt about the other person and make them feel less rather than making you feel more, you win. It's not the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to strive for affirmation, not for putting someone else down. Unfortunately, in our society, relationships are becoming more and more of a scarcity. Why? Too busy? Too many social media friends? When, you, when we go to social media, what are people doing with their time? Why, why are they spending hours of their time expressing either their opinion or finding some opinion of someone else and posting it as theirs? I would propose that relationships and affirmation are real things. They are real people talking to real people. Too much emphasis in our culture on being independent and striving to be rich or affluent or thought of as brilliant. Is wrapped around not taking enough time being with one another. And to me, this is where the church comes in. The church today needs to be what the first century church was. When Luke writes in Acts chapter 4, verse 32, and the congregation of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. They were affirming something they were affirming the Godhead. They were affirming that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he shows us grace and he shows us mercy. And they were unified and they were saying to one another, we're of one body and we're of one soul. The writers of the Bible would just urge us. And I think it is. And so because the Bible is, I'm urging you this evening, to be of one heart and of one soul. Now, we can do this. We can follow the exhortation of the Apostle Paul when he writes to the brethren at Philippi in Philippians chapter 4, verses 2 to 4. And he said, Make my joy complete, being of the same mind, ready for this, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty deceit or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own interests, and that is your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. As we do that for others, we give them the affirmation that they need. This was the affirmation that Jesus was trying to give his disciples 
When he said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in prison, you came and visited me. And they said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Jesus, we didn't do any of those things. And then he affirmed them. He affirmed them by saying, when you did that for your brothers out there, and the Apostle Paul echoes that, think more of them with humility and, and of mind. Think of them as being very, very important. Affirm them. And Jesus was saying, I affirm you because you did the right thing. You fed those that were hungry. You clothed those that were naked. You know, you, you gave uh, homage. Uh, you, you, know, you provided a place to live for those that needed it. And so as we do that for others, we give them the affirmation that they need. And within the brotherhood of believers, within the church, this is reciprocal. Not only do we affirm others, but I think, whether it's subconsciously or consciously, we also expect that same affirmation, that same desire to be loved and to be accepted for who and what we are from them. And so, our second basic need that we have talked about in these seven desires of the heart is the need for affirmation. And there is no greater affirmation than to realize, num, number one, that we're made in the image of God. And that even though we have sinned, God has found a way to regenerate us, to reaffirm us, to be recreated in God's image, in the image of his dear son. And then when we were at when we're added to the Lord's church, we have those around us. We're surrounded by like-minded people walking down that same path that we're walking down, that same hope, that same joy, that same abundant life, that same thought of living with you eternally. And we gain affirmation. We receive the affirmation we need, and we give that affirmation we need. I'd like you to have this, this desire of affirmation on your heart. Give it some thought during the week. Mull it around a little bit. Meditate on it. That's how you really, really get into a lesson. You, you think about it for a while, and then you meditate on it. And you allow it to become a part of your own fiber. I hope that this message touched us a little bit, gives us something to think about, and gives us something to meditate upon. Let's close this service with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so very, very grateful that you're in our lives. And we're so grateful that we receive this affirmation from you. First of all, that we're created in your image spiritually. That if we are to, to communicate with you, it must be in spirit and in truth. And that even though we sinned, we can be regenerated as believers through repentance and confession and baptism to start our lives anew to receive that affirmation. And finally, that we can receive the affirmation within the church which Jesus is the head of, that uh, the folks in the church that are walking down the same road that we're work, walking down, that we can walk down hand in hand, affirming one another, letting them know that we're happy with them because of who they are and what they are. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we contemplate that this this evening, as we meditate on it. Bless us and uh, see us through to the next time that uh, we get to meet again. I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe, and may God bless you all.